Welcome back. We have a new show for you, and it's called... Walking Through the Park. And that is to do with the Madison Parks Department, and this is Scott Davidson. He's come in. He's going to start being with us and tell us all about the Parks Department here in Madison, Indiana, and what we can do and how we get to do it. And what I don't know, Debbie, I'll find out for you. So yes. we'll, well, that'll be an extension of our program, and if you have questions, obviously you can call, get a hold of Debbie, get a hold of the Parks Department, and then we'll find your answers and provide right. them on this program. And that, that's going to be beneficial because if you have a question, there's somebody else that has the same question. Oh, no doubt about it. They and, just don't want to ask. And no questions are too dumb. That's right. Yeah. Well, my grandmother always told me the only dumb question is the one that's never asked because it doesn't have an answer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, Correct. I learned to ask questions. <laughs> that's good for an interviewer to ask questions. It, that's true. That's true. <laughs> so anyway, with the Parks Department, a lot of people don't realize how many parks are actually in the Madison Parks Department. There are a lot. People are very aware of the Rucker Sports Complex. There are several fields up there. The Playground for All Children's up near the uh, the Rucker Sports Complex. Also, right. the the skate skate park is up there. We have the Brown Gym. We have Crystal Beach Pool. But there are so many other parks. JC Park is right. down by the bridge. There's the a golf lot. Course? The golf course, exactly. And uh, people say, "Well, I'm not really a golfer." Well, you can still you still benefit from the golf course, believe it or not, because they have scrambles up there all the time that benefit the Boys and Girls Club, yes. the baseball team, uh, regatta. So. You know somebody that benefits from the Sunrise right. Golf Course. Yes. I have a question for you. Yes. Do you know how many acres the Sunrise Golf Course is made up of? I used to know, but I can't, I don't know. And I didn't know this till I researched. 160 acres. No way. 18 holes. Sunrise <gasps> Golf Course. 160 acres. Well, I, I That's can see that. That's a big park. That is. That's huge. Yeah. And I don't know. I like to go up there and sometimes just go for a walk. Yeah. I don't know about other people, but it's just, it's nice. And I don't, I'm not allowed to golf. I guess I am allowed to golf, but I don't call my game golf. It's called four. Before I hit the ball, I holler four because I don't know where it's going to go. But uh, Sunrise Golf Course, there's a lot of folks that are dedicated right. players up there. They, they love the golf course, and uh, we love it here in Madison. But And a lot of communities don't have a golf course like Sunrise Golf Course. We are so blessed. I know, yes, and it's very well kept. Yeah. Yes. Oh, and Jeff Richards, the golf pro. Uh, Brandon Lee is the superintendent. And if I start ma mentioning names, I'm going to forget. <laughs> somebody but we appreciate everybody that does yes. the behind the scenes work yes because they get it done before the golfers get there most of the time right. and golfers get there pretty early in the morning sometimes they so do. we appreciate the work at the sunrise golf course no doubt no doubt that's awesome now with all these parks that we have in madison indiana how can they actually access them? Do, do they have to go to the to the park itself, or do they come to a central location and, and get information? Well, they can do both. They can stop by the Parks Department, which is located at the Brown Gym, the historic Brown Gym. Yes. Uh, and it, it's an awesome facility. We get people that come in from out of town that just want to see it because it's the home of the 1950 state champs. Uh, and if I'm there or somebody else, they can kind of give them a little bit of a history of the building. But uh, you can come and get information about the parks at uh, the Brown Gym, right. or if you drive around, if there's a neighborhood park, it's a it's a Madison Parks Department facility, uh, and they're they're sprinkled all over the place. A lot of people know J.C. Park down by the bridge. Right. Uh, a lot of people know, like I mentioned before, the playground for all children up by the Rucker Sports Complex. But there are several neighborhood parks, Oak Hill Park, for yes. example, uh, and, and kids have benefited, and adults too have benefited from having those parks. And we at the Madison Parks Department are in charge of maintaining those. Right. Now I know there's some parks that are small, like they have just a swing and a slide and a couple of picnic tables. There's one just down from our office. But everybody from the um, River Terrace, they go over there and eat lunch. Mm -hmm. And so they go in and sit down and they have a nice place to go. That would be Gaines Park down there. That's and you're, Gaines, it, Gaines yes. Park. And there's a shelter house, you're right. Yes. And most of the parks that we have do have shelter houses. Of course, uh, the Hargan Matthews Park, uh, yes. the recently oh, redone yes. down there by the river, That's which beautiful. is next to Bicentennial Park down there, which is another park that we don't even mention because they have festivals and whatnot down there. But uh, yeah, that's it's a great place for kids to go. And, and moms and dads, a safe place for them to go too. And, yes. and I, I think we need to emphasize that it's a place where parents feel safe taking their kids and a kudos goes to the folks that uh, help raise the dollars and get that taken right. care of down there at Hargan Matthews. Now with all the parks departments you you do other things besides just the parks because you have you actually have team sports and 
things that are going on all the time. So how do they find out about those? Well, and that's the recreation side of things, uh, mm -hmm. Debbie. Normally it's Madison Parks Department, everybody knows, but they forget the and recreation. Right. And uh, we do have information available to the Parks Department and we've got programming going on all the time and not just for kids, we have adult programming yes. too. And our uh, and the senior citizens programming that we have, we have a couple days a week where they have actually exercise class at the Brown Gym. Yeah. Uh, just recently started pickleball. Uh, we have pickleball that goes Monday through Friday, 11 to 1 at the Brown Gym. And pickleball is basically inside tennis with a hard wiffle ball. <laughs> yes. I've never played. I've watched. Uh, but people, they love that. It's people, other people say, I'm not into pickleball. Well, we've got... Uh, we've got guys that play basketball, we've got yes. open volleyball, we've mm -hmm. got several other opportunities. We have uh, men's softball, women's softball during the summer and, and the fall. We have a, a two times a year we have a men's basketball league. So we've got something going on all the time for the adults. Plus, we have uh, for kids. We start uh, our, in, we have baseball for seven year old through 15 boys and girls. Oh wow. Uh, that's during the summer, baseball and softball. And then we go right into our volleyball program and our tackle and flag football program in the, in the fall. And then we go into our basketball program. And also for the first time this year, we ha actually had uh, cheerleading in the fall, but we have cheerleading during the basketball season. Yeah, well, I saw so, the cheerleading working out the other day. Yep, and they're awesome, they're oh, great. Yeah. And it's a great opportunity for them to come out and cheer, but also, you know, the junior high's got to have some cheerleaders coming up, and yes. this is great training for them. And uh, Jessica Lawyer has done a great job with the girls' uh, cheerleading program for the uh, basketball, and I, kudos go to them. They yes. practice once a week, and right. they're so cute. If you get a chance, uh, come on down and see them. They, they normally perform down at the Brown Gym at halftime right. of one of the games, so it's awesome. Well, I thought it was really cool because she had little bitty girls there, and some of them were as big as I am, so I know they were high school kids. Yeah. So, But they were working in the same group, doing the same routine. And the, the kids are all helping each other. And they're bonding, yeah. yeah. That's what, what's so great about it. They're like little sister to the big sisters and somebody they can look up to. Yes. And I just think it's going to explode. Uh, you, you, there's dance programs out there and whatnot and, and some other cheerleading program opportunities. But this is a great starting point for some of those kids. And uh, I just think it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Oh, I think so. And I yeah. think the more information we put out there, the more people are going to realize what's there and access it. Yeah, and so. when the deadlines are, too, because they come at the same time every year but some people say well I forgot this year and whatnot so we're gonna try to hit those as part of this program yes. making sure people know when the deadlines are yes. so they can't say well I didn't know about it and right we we're, want them to know we're gonna make sure that that you know when the sign up starts and then we're gonna remind you during the sign up and then a couple of days before the end of it we're gonna remind you again so we're gonna try to make sure we keep you well informed about it so, so we'll have to do this program like every other day <laughs> <laughs> well, we probably could. We, of course, we we carry on too much, so it might take us a while to get those yeah, out. Yeah, so. good luck editing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but we're going to try to make sure you get all these. Now, there's another thing with the Parks Department. That how long has the Parks Department been in Madison, Indiana? That is a great question, and Madison is really unique because not just Sunrise Golf Course, but not a lot of communities have a Parks Department. I know Jeffersonville does because I work with Ricky Romans, who's the he's in charge. He's kind of me down there, the sports coordinator right. at Jeffersonville. But most communities don't have a Parks Department per se, where they provide recreational opportunities and whatnot. They have a park system, obviously, right. and people mow grass and and take care of that, but. We are one of those unique entities, and I love Madison. It's all there's so many, it's so it's so unique here in Madison. It is. And we don't realize and that, that how blessed we are with everything that we have here: the river, uh, the hilltop, the downtown, and, and everything. It kind of meshes together. So. Um, yeah, so we have the Parks Department where we're able to provide opportunities for people. So I think it's well, awesome. Yeah. You know, the, and again, the more we make sure they understand what's there the more they'll access it. So. And you ask when it actually started. I'm going to guess in the early 60s. I right. mean, there were, there were Crystal Beach Pool was built back in the 30s. Uh, Brown Gym was built back in the 30s. The golf course has been there for a while, and it actually wasn't a city project and eventually became in a, a, city, a project. city project. Uh, but uh, there's been parks, but 
organized under one umbrella probably in the early 60s but that's a question i'll see if i can get the answer to. there you go we yeah. got one <laughs> yeah there you go got some research i got to do already <laughs> that's okay we're keeping busy <laughs> so now is there anything else we need to make sure they know in this show now of course you stay tuned we'll try to do this again next week anything we can tell them this week that they maybe need to know about something coming up well we do have uh baseball and softball mm -hmm. signups are not that far away uh, we normally the first part of april have our workout week where we have the kids all get together and go through the workouts and then we divvy up teams and we start practicing so applications for baseball and softball are not that far out probably mid-February we're talking uh, but we'll try to get information on here we'll get yes. it uh, via media outlets and whatnot and get it on on the web page and whatnot uh, when that's available um, so that's coming up also uh, it's not too late or not too early to start thinking about if you want to work for the Parks Department because we need help yes uh, we need help with uh, umpires, scorekeepers, concessions, and whatnot, um, because I can't get it done by myself. Well, and we not, have another crew, and we can't clone you. So yeah, we, we can't clone me. Uh, so that's those good. are yeah, that's probably a good thing. Yeah, uh, you probably good. try a couple of times to break the mold, but uh, but if if you're a high schooler looking for an right. opportunity to work some hours uh, during the summer, you might have another job. But normally our programming is in the evening. Also, it's not too early to start thinking about swimming. That's right. Crystal Beach Pool, it, it's it's a, a great facility down there, open three months out of the year. Uh, and there are days when there's eight to 900 people that take advantage of the pool. And it's op normally open noon to, uh, noon to eight. And we normally go Memorial Day to Labor Day. That's kind of the time frame when we're open. But we have now pool passes available. That they can actually purchase. Correct. So they need to. And they're a little cheaper now than they will be by the time the pool opens. Yes. There's three stages of pool prices. Yes, right? correct. Yes. And I, got, I have to get my notes. That's I'll okay. Try, I'll try not to get this up in our faces or anything. But uh, right now, if you want to get a pool pass, from now till March 31st, a pool pass is $40. Oh, wow. $40 for the whole summer. $40 for the whole summer. Oh, my goodness. And it, it's a great opportunity. We have yes. lifeguards, obviously, everybody down there taking care of you. Now, after March 31st, all the way up until May 22nd, the pool price is $50. Right. Which is the normal price. Yes. That's what it's normally been. Well, after the pool opens, after May 23rd, yes. the price is going to go to $60. So, I mean, there's some savings there. Uh, that's twenty. If they buy them now, that's $20, they uh, say. If you're buying, buying more than one. Yeah, it normally most can. Most people are. Yeah. You're buying more than one for the family. So... You're saving $20. Yeah. That's a lot. And stop by and see Kim at the parks office. That's where you get it right there at the park office. Also, we have family passes if you want to get those. A family of three is $120. Right. A family of four is $150. A family of five is $180. And then you add $30 for each additional. And there are some big families out there, obviously. Yes. But so now, uh, the pool pass. We want to get you down there and get your pool pass now. Yes. $40 until March through March 31st. Yep. $40. Better hurry. We're saving you money. Saving lots. Saving money. That's $20, though. That's yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, it's not too early to get your uh, golf pass, too. That's true. Yeah, and officially, the golf course doesn't open until Jeff gets back, the golf pro. He takes a little time off because he, he's up there almost seven days a week all the he time. He loves it, though. Yeah, he, he does a great job. He, yes. And, and running tournaments and keeping, you know, keeping things going up there with the pro shop and whatnot. But it's not too early to get your golf pass. Wow. You can stop, and you don't get it at Sunrise Golf Course. You come and see us at the Browns. You're normally seeing Kim down there. Right. And uh, the golf pass is uh, $500. You might say, wow, $500 to play golf? Oh, no, but that that's huge just to mow it. Yeah. Well, true. Yeah, it maintain and help mowing it. But I tell everybody that comes in to get their golf pass, $500. For the first time, the rest of the time, it's free. So $500 for your first round, the rest of the time is free. That's how I look at it. So. Yeah. So if you need more information about that, call Kim at the park office. Uh, 812-265-8308. That's 265-8308. Or you can call me on my city cell phone, 493-9840. Now, I'll check the messages, and if I don't answer, leave a message, I'll get back with you. Right. But it's not too early to start thinking about your summertime activities, which include swimming right. and playing golf. That's awesome. Well, I think we've given them enough to think about right now. They've got you? a lot of information out there. <laughs> so... We're going to let you go this time, and next time we're going to have a lot more information for you. So thanks for being with us, Well, Scott. thank you, Debbie, and we'll take another walk in the park later. That's right, we will. Yeah. Maybe more than one. Yeah. <laughs> There's plenty of parks. <laughs> well, we thank our sponsors for helping us put this on, and as always, we appreciate you watching.